I called it Hearing the Call of God in the Wilderness. And who knows that often we're in a wilderness and there could be a few of you that are feeling like you're in a wilderness now or a wilderness experience, but God's more than able. He can speak to you in that situation. He'll speak to your call and he'll speak to your destiny. Wild radical bond. Okay, I'm going to share with you today the story of three men who not only survived the wilderness experience but came through stronger, more powerful, remain faithful to the dream and fulfill the purpose of God on their lives. All three were given a calling. All three stayed true to the vision. All three withstood the enemy. All three spoke the vision or the dream. All three persevered and overcame. All three remained full of faith. And all three saw the fulfillment of the call. And you must think, oh my goodness, they must be supermen. Well, so many times we feel like we've missed it, we've missed that call. But you know what? As we go through these men's lives, it's never too late. It's never too late. I was so blessed by that lady who shared that she was an intercessor. And uh, that just impacts me so much because we're, we're no, there is no excuse in the house that we can't be activated for the kingdom. It doesn't matter what your age, what your shoe size, it doesn't matter. God can work through you in a powerful way. The first man is Caleb. He's from the tribe of Judah. He's from the warrior tribe. And I'd like to read, begin to read from Numbers 13, 27 to 33. So we know the story. It's been a long trial for these poor guys. They finally get to the promised land. So Moses sends in the 12 spies and... We all know that two come back with a, we can do this, and the other ten, so no, we can't. They reported to Moses and said, we went into the land where you sent us, and it certainly does flow with milk and honey, and this is the fruit. But the people who live in the land are strong, and the cities are fortified and very large. Moreover, we saw there the descendants of Anak, people of great stature and courage, I'll move on through all those names. And the Canaanites lived by the Dead Sea and along the side of the Jordan. Now, Caleb was always going to be a warrior. He was always going to be the one that will speak out. It actually says that Caleb quietened the people before Moses. Now, these were millions of people. I believe he was a man who knew what he believed in. He knew his God and he spoke before the whole of Israel and quieted them and said, let us go up at once and take possession of it, for we will certainly conquer it. He knew straight away that they could do it, and we'll see why. But they were outshouted, I guess, because what did the others say? But the man who had gone up with him said, we are not able to go up against the people of Canaan, for they are too strong for us. So they gave the Israelites a bad report about the land which they had spied out, saying the land through which we went in, in spying it out, is a land that devours its inhabitants and all the people that we saw in are men of great stature. And we are like grasshoppers in our own sight, as so we were in their sight. You know, there's, you have to be one that stands out in the crowd. You have to be the one that voices what you fully believe that God's spoken to you. If you run with the crowd, you're going to miss out. If you run with the crowd or feel pressured by the world to not speak what God's spoken on your heart, it will crush you. It will cause you to go through a wilderness that you won't be able to get out of. You have to be able to see what we know, the classic of what Neil has been preaching so long. You have to know who you are in Christ. You have to know who your identity is. You have to know who God's called you to be. You can't see yourself as a grasshopper. A grasshopper, that's what they saw themselves as, not what the giants saw, it's how they saw themselves. So we move on to Numbers 14.24. And, of course, Moses has gone to bat for the people to God and God's a bit annoyed. He's done so much. He's already taken, walked right through the Red Sea. He's already taken them so many miracles out and yet they refuse to believe except Caleb and Joshua. But my servant Caleb 
in Numbers 14, 24 says, because he has a different spirit and has followed me fully, I will bring into the land into which he ended and his descendants shall take possession of it. So Caleb, we see here, is a man of a different spirit. And he fully, fully followed after God's heart. So he's a man of a different spirit. That's why he could stand up. Why was he a man of a different spirit? Because he followed fully after God's heart. And that's the thing. Are you a person of a different spirit? Have you let compromise in your life? When the battle comes up and there's giants in your life, are you a person of a different spirit? We have to be a person of a different spirit, a spirit that follows fully after God. Now watch Caleb now. So he hears that word. He's told that word. Moses tells him that word, what God has promised. So here's Caleb. For 38 years, he is wandering around the desert. Hanging on to that word that said, God said, this is my son Caleb of a different spirit. I will give him his inheritance. He wanders around for 38 years with all those people who thought they were like grasshoppers, who thought that they couldn't do it, complaining that they didn't have food, then complaining that they were sick of the same food. But Caleb had a different spirit. So he gets to the 38 years, then Joshua takes over. They fight for another seven years, battling all the land to take the promised land. And now we come, it's 45 years later, and Caleb is 85 years old. Would you have held on to your promise that long? <laughs> would you hold on to your promise? You would if you're a person or a woman or a man of God with a different spirit. Amen? So, but Caleb's not, sh not he's not shy. He tells them in, in um, Joshua 14, verses 6 to 15, and he tells them, I was 40 years old when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me in to spy out the land, and I brought back the word to him as it was in my heart. Do you know what I think to Caleb that was just like yesterday? He'd walked that journey and he kept walking, but I really believe he walked every day and he said, I'm walking into my inheritance. I'm declaring my inheritance. I'm going to take that mountain. I see where those giants are. They're mine. They're mine. You have to have that sort of an attitude. When I was about 20 years old, I was in a little country church, just got spirit filled and had amazing preachers come like Bev and Kev Dales and, I, and the Campbells. And I remember at the age of about 21, 22, hearing Bev Dales preach. And she is an amazing preacher, if you don't know her, and a prophetic and I just went, God, I want to be like her. I want to do what she does. I want to be that person. And God said to me, well, stick in close to the people around you. Learn from them. Grow from them. And you know what? I, every, at every opportunity, I just said, God, I want to take that step and I want to take my promise. And God has been faithful to that call and to that heart's call. And he will be faithful to your promise and to your call if you will just take steps of faith toward it and not give up. Don't give up on the call. So here's Caleb. He's 85. He says, here I am at 85 years old and I will take. And yet I am strong this day as the day that Moses sent me. And just as my strength was then, so now is my strength for war, both for going out and for coming in. And I wish I had boots on like Neil. But because he says, now therefore... Give me this mountain of which the Lord spoke in that day. So he wanted that mountain. The very mountain that he wanted was where the giants were. So not only was he a man of a different spirit, he took on the toughest job out of all the battling for seven years. He saved the best for last. He said, I'm going up. I'm going to get those mountains. I'm going to destroy them. I'm gonna, it's going to be my inheritance because God has promised because Caleb was a man of a different spirit, because he followed fully after the heart of God. And Caleb went up, it says, even in that he was humble. He said, if God is with me, I will 
take the mountain. And he did. He did. The next man I want to talk about, and it was appropriate last weekend, I mentioned this as well, John the Baptist. John the Baptist has an extraordinary beginning as we know, that his poor parents were just as shocked as poor Mary and Joseph. But on the day that he was to be circumcised, Zacharias, his dad, had a prophetic word over his life. You've got to love those prophetic words, don't you? They can change and break the season. And, he, and part of that word says this from Zacharias, um, it says in Luke 1, 76 to 79, he says, and you, child, he's declaring this over his child, will be called a prophet of the Most High, for you will go on before the Lord, the Messiah, to prepare his ways, to give his people the knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of sins because of the tender mercies of God. And so he tells him, he declares over him the prophetic word for his life. And you know what it says? It says that John the Baptist as he grew and went in the wilderness, as we know, it says that he grew strong in spirit. So now we have something different. This is John the Baptist. He's got a word and it says that he grew strong in spirit. And I believe that as he grew up, his dad kept saying to him, you're going to be the prophet. You're going to be the one that's declaring, prepare you the way. This is who you are. So God, so we need people around us to remind us of our call too, don't we? We need people around us that says, this is what God's destined for your life. This is what God's called you to be. Don't fall back from it. But, you know, he was hardship for John. He, he, he took that call very, very seriously. And, you know, sometimes when you take the call of God into your life, it can be a bit of a challenge. It can be a difficult time in your life. When God called me, for 10 years I really struggled because the enemy tried to take away my voice. He gave me asthma, he gave me sinus problems, so it was difficult for me even to speak. But you know what? I just went, no, the call of God is on my life and I will stand up and speak and rasp and whatever else, but the call of God is on my life because he told me. The call of God came to me in the wilderness, well, the Philippines at least. Because that's what it's all about, is following after the call. And John the Baptist refused. He just, I think he was out in the wilderness wearing that lovely tunic, <laughs> eating that delicious diet. And uh, because he said, I'm called. I'm called for the biggest moment in history. I'm called for the mega biggest one. I'm declaring the way of the Messiah. I'm the one crying out in the wilderness that he's coming. I'm the one. And he went through those years in the wilderness holding on to that word. It's an exciting thing. Okay, get back to the scripture. So he grew strong in spirit. He held on to that word. He didn't grow tired or weary because he knew in due season he would reap a harvest. Are you tired and weary? Have you let the ball down? Has God called you and you thought that, oh, no, it's all done and dusted now? God, I don't think the calling of God is irrevocable. It's not done and dusted. It's just that you've grown tired and weary. We have a hurting world. We have so many hurting out there that need you, that need the call of God that's on your life, nobody else's life, your life. John the Baptist had a very specific call of God on his life. So do you. So do you. Luke 3, 2 to 6, and it says, The word of God came to John, the son of Zacharias, where? In the wilderness. How cool is that? When you think you're in the wilderness and when you're having a tough time, if you would seek after God with your whole heart, he will speak to you in your wilderness experience, whatever that looks like in your life, whether that's through a work situation, whether that's a health situation. God has a word for you in your wilderness. He has a call for you in your wilderness. So what did he do? He got the call in the wilderness and then it says he went. There's your answer right there. He went. Did he stay in the wilderness? No, he went. 
I always say, and I heard preachers say it over the years, the anointing's in the going. If you think that it's going to happen while you're sitting in the chair or while you're sitting at home, it's not going to. The anointing's in the going. I have never been let down with by God ever. You know, the call of God on my life, I learned from a young age, and I've shared this with the girls a lot of times, that God will fill my mouth. He's the one that will fill my mouth. And he taught me that from a young age, put me in a situation where I didn't have time to prepare, I just got thrown out, and I suddenly un understood that the Holy Ghost won't let me down. And you know what? He never has. And it's whatever the calling of God is on your life, that when you go, he won't let you down. When you go, the anointing will be on what you do. When you go, he can move. Because why? God responds to faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. So he always will respond to faith. So if you go, he turns up because he has to. He's God. He's a faithful, faithful God. His word is true. He does, he's not a man that he should lie. He will go with you. He will go behind you. He'll be in your lead. He'll be beside you. But if you have to go, you have to go. You've got to go. The exciting part is that John got to see, like Caleb, he got to see the fulfilment of his call. So he went into all the country around the Jordan, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sin. He yelled out, I'm the voice of one shouting in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. And he says it stays faithful to his call through much hardship with a leather belt, food with locusts and wild honey. But he was faithful to the call. And you know what it says the next day, John, so he went and it says that he was baptising and, and all of that for a while. But I love it in the scripture that the, the order of it says that he went and then he came. He went and then he came. He went and then he came. If you go, the anointing will come. If you go, you will see people be healed and set free. If you go, you'll see salvations. If you go, you'll see lives restored. But you've just got to hear, you've got to go, and then he'll come. Amen? So the next day, so exciting, John there saw Jesus coming toward him and says, Behold! All these years that I've been praying, all these years the prophetic word on is now about to come to pass. There is nothing more exciting. When you step into the destiny that God has for you and start to step out into it and see God move. And so John, he says, he sees, behold the Lamb of God. All these years, all this time, he's been hanging on to the call, hanging on to the word of God. But now, now he can actually say the words. He can actually say, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I have said, after me comes a man who is before me, who was before me. I did not know him, but he should be revealed to Israel. Therefore, I came baptising. So he was out there baptising. He was out there preaching. He was out there doing everything that God told him to do. And then he came. And then he came. And John bore witness saying, I saw the spirit descending from heaven like a dove and he remained upon him. I did not know him, but he who sent me to baptise with water said to me. Again, see God was talking to him all the time in the wilderness, wasn't he? He was, he was, he was telling him that there's going to be one that comes along that's going to be likened to the Lamb of God and that there's going to be a dove descend upon him and you're going to know that this is he. So God gave him a vision, gave him pictures, gave him uh, his own words in the desert. And that's really exciting if God gives you visions or pictures and there's people here that have dreams and there's people here that God has shown visions but you've tucked it away and go, oh, that's just me, I'm just silly. And God says, no, I'm releasing visions. I'm releasing dreams in this house. I'm releasing prophetic art in this place. I'm releasing prophetic songs in this place. So God is in the business of releasing the call of God in your life. Amen? So he sees that, everything that he prayed for, everything that he saw in the wilderness, he now is seeing. 
How cool is that? So he sees it and he says, I have seen and testified that this is the Son of God. So all the people were baptized and Jesus was baptized and while he was praying, the visible heaven opened. Heaven opened. Then he actually hears God speaking. This is his, my beloved son. What a fulfillment of a call. What an amazing fulfillment that John saw after waiting for years and trusting the word of God. Because he, what was he, was Caleb? He was a different spirit. He was fully after the heart of God. John grew strong in spirit in the wilderness experience. You can be in the wilderness. I have to say, I haven't always been strong in the wilderness experience. When I was lying in a hospital bed after having the second operation from the emergency operation, I don't think I was very strong in spirit <laughs> or very holy at all. But God was faithful to take you through the wilderness experience. So we get to the last person now, and that's Jesus. Now Jesus, of course, he's now just been full of the Holy Ghost. He's just, he's just now stepping into his ministry. He is now, it says, Luke 4.1, now Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, goes into the wilderness. Now, that seems a bit odd, doesn't it, don't you think? He's now full of the Holy Spirit. God's just said, this is my beloved son, I'm well pleased. Surely that's the time to go and start your ministry. Isn't that right? I think I was telling the girls the other day that if you want to know where your weaknesses are, go out in the mission field. If you want to know what you haven't had dealt with with God, go out in God because the enemy is going to stick his finger on it and turn it and dig it in a bit deeper. And I think it was an example that God, Jesus, showed us that now full of the Holy Ghost, he still had to go through the wilderness experience because he had to learn, I mean, he was Jesus, <laughs> we will say that, but he was a man as well, that he could, what, defeat the enemy at every turn. That there was no area in him that could be broken, tested, or anything before he went out and did the ministry. So now Jesus, full of the Holy Ghost, goes into the wilderness. And we know the story. He rebuked Satan at every time using the word of God. And he was there 40 days, 40 nights. It sounded like a long time to me. But he was sure he knew he wasn't going to be broken. So what happens then? Luke 4, 14 to 21. Then Jesus went back to Galilee in the power of the Holy Spirit. That's what your wilderness spirits can do. That's what it can do if you just say, God, you've got this call on my life. I'm called to be this person. If you allow God to take you through some testing, if you allow God to test your faith and grow your faith, you will come out of it full of the power of the Holy Ghost. And who knows that we need the power of the Holy Ghost? Amen? We need the power of the Holy Ghost. If we want to move mountains, we need the power of the Holy Ghost. If we want to see people set free, we need the power of the Holy Ghost. If we want to see demons flee, we need the power of the Holy Ghost. You have to know your authority. What did Jesus learn? He discovered his authority as a man of God, as the man, the son of man he was. He discovered his authority against the works of the enemy. Then you'll walk into the power and the authority of God that you need on your life. You cannot take on this call without the power of the Holy Ghost. You cannot do it. You will be smacked around every time. You must know your authority. You must know who you are. You must be strong in spirit. You must have a different spirit. You must be filled with the Holy Ghost. You must be full of the power of the Holy Ghost to do what God's called you to do. It says... And he came out in the power of the Holy Spirit and news about him spread around all straight away. He was different, wasn't he? He was full of the Holy Ghost. He was now moving around and he was, the word was spreading. 
When you move in the fullness of the Holy Ghost and in the power of the Holy Ghost with a different spirit and you're strong in spirit, people are going to start talking about you. People are going to be set free around you. The word is going to spread. But you'll have the devil talking about you, that's for sure. The devil will notice. That's why you need a wilderness experience to know your authority, to know that you can stand up against the walls of the enemy, that no weapon formed against you will, will prosper, that every tongue that raised against you will fall, that the weapons on your warfare are not carnal but are mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds. Amen. That you know how to wield the sword of your spirit, that you can deflect the fiery darts of the enemy, that you can stand and declare the word of the Lord and not be intimidated by the works of the enemy. Amen. That's what God's called you to do. Now, I don't want to scare you all. God's not called you to be preachers. Not God called you to be prophets. But he has called you. He has called you to stop for the one in front of you, to speak life into them, to speak the anointing of God over them, to speak healing over them. You don't have to be some big out front dynamic person. We're here for the equipping of the saints. It's the saints that will call, bring in the lost. It's the saints that will speak hope into the lost. It's the saints that will pray over people and be healed. It's the saints that will see those little girls set free. It's the saints. Hello, who are the saints? Are you sure? Amen. Praise God. So now, he began teaching in the synagogues, was praised and glorified and honoured by all. So he came back home. That's a tough, that's a tough gig, isn't it? That's a tough crowd. Home. I preached on the streets of Dolby, had some money thrown at me, had a few eggs. I don't think I'd have the courage to do it now. When you're young, you're so stupid, aren't you? No fear. I preached outside of pubs in the back of the ute because somebody dared me. My goodness, all we did was put tracks in drunks' pockets. That's all we could do, really. I've, I've just been so excited about what God can do through your life. I remember when I first joined COC, long story how I got spiritual, and I've shared this with the girls, I just stood and said, God, if all this is all there is to Christianity, I'm out of here. Within 12 months, I think I was spirit-filled and going to COC. <laughs> God moves quickly. He can. He can move quickly. And he turned my life upside down. You know, who he is, everybody spirit-filled, everyone full of the Holy Ghost. So apparently there's no reason why we can't be fulfilling the call of God in your life. I have seen, I started writing down when I was training out there last weekend, I started writing down some of the things I've seen. I was like, holy cow, I've seen legs grow. I've seen people set free. I've seen demons bow the name of the name of Jesus. I've gone over little tiny boats over open seas for over an hour, spoke to people that have never seen a white person and shared the gospel. And I thought, I must have been crazy doing that. But you know what? It's the great adventure of faith. One meeting I will never forget in Cebu, and I got to preach before a thousand or so youth. I just had the best time of my life and saw so many people just so excited for Jesus. But see, God can take you anywhere. God can do anything. It doesn't have to be overseas. It can be just down the street. But you can still see, feel the anointing. I've said to the girls, I felt the anointing move more on my life one-on-one -on -one than I ever have preaching before people because, they, because God loves the one. Jesus loves the one. That's all you've got to do. Okay, so what has Jesus done here? So he goes back to his hometown, and I think I read this scripture out a while um, when I was doing communion. He said, he opened up the prophet Isaiah, and he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. He has sent me to announce release, pardon to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to set free those who are oppressed, to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord. He sat down. He said, this is done. He said, this is done. This is done. So that means it's done for you and I, that you are called to set people free. You are called to preach. You are called to see blind eyes open. Are we believers? What are the signs that follow those that believe? Yeah, you will cast out demons. 
I was 20 year old when I cast out my first demon. I was just so terrified. <laughs> it was out at um, Bargaminda. If you don't have no idea what that is, it's just a, a little t a church. I was 20 years old. This was my first trip out west with Pastor Merv. So of course, everything was full on radical with Pastor Merv. Um, we had to clean out the bull dust out of the meeting hall first. And uh, then we had a meeting and uh, a little indigenous girl came in. She was on the altar call. I was singing on the altar call. I used to do that once upon a time. <laughs> singing on the front. And uh, God just spoke to me. You know, I'm 20, 21, just spirit filled about eight weeks, I think. And he said, go and pray for that girl. Take her out. And she's sobbing on the And I said, I'm not doing that, God. I can't do that. And he said, go and do it. And I'm having this argument with him um, when I'm singing. And in the end, I said, oh, okay, because he said, if you don't do it, I'll get someone else to do it. So I took her aside, and I just started praying with her like Merv prayed, you know, how Merv prays, just started praying for her. And all of a sudden, she just started manifesting. And I just went, and it said, who do you think you are trying to bind me? And I just went, oh, praise God, and prayed a bit more like Merv. And she went down in the power, and I've never seen such a transformation of peace over someone's face. See, if God can do it through a silly kid, he can do it through you. God is, is in the activation business. God's in the call business. God needs you to rise up. Do you know that when, if you, who's read, I mentioned it last week, who's read The Divine Romance? It's a beautiful book. But it tells the story of, of the whole story of Bible, really, from God's perspective and the angels. And at the end of the crucifixion and uh, Jesus came back, the angels say to God, so what now? What's the plan? He goes, they're the plan. That little motley crew, they're the plan. Do you know what? You're the plan. There is no other plan. You're the plan. What are you doing with the call of God on your life? It's you. It's you. It's the call of God on your life. Ah, uh, you're going through the wilderness, but you don't know my situation. But you don't know I work all the time. But you don't know that I'm so sick and I have this and I have that. All real things. But God can find a way out of the wilderness. God's call is still there on your life. God can find a way through the wilderness with you. All you have to do is have a different spirit to follow fully after God, to be strong in spirit and lay hold of the word that God gave you to be filled with the spirit and then to walk in the power of the holy ghost i think you don't un we forget what's at our fingertips the power of the holy ghost are we pentecostal someone out there asked me said well what does a pentecostal actually mean and i said me I'm a Pentecostal. I'm one of those crazy people who love Jesus, who believe in all the gifts of the Spirit. That's what being a Pentecostal means. I saw people out there that were frightened of the things of the Spirit. Fright, how could you be frightened of the Holy Ghost, who is such a gentleman, who leads you, who comforts you, who teaches you, who helps you? You have no excuse, it says, because the Holy Spirit will guide you and teach you what? So now, what do you have to do? What did John the Baptist do when he had the word of the Lord? He, he went. You've got the word of the Lord, now go. You've got the calling of God, now go. You've got the different spirit because you're fully after God's own heart, now go. Caleb went. John went. Jesus went. Every one of them would never have received the fulfillment of the promise if they didn't go. Can you see that? Can you see that? If you don't go, you don't get. Sounds a bit harsh, doesn't it? But God has got so much more. That's why he wants you to go. He's, he's a funny dad. He wants to see his, his kids have a go to believe in him. He says, I, I've equipped you. I've given you everything. I have laid up in heaven everything that you'll ever need. My son sat down. He said, now do it. You're seated up in, with me in heavenly places. I've given you all power and authority over the enemy. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. No, no longer that you that lives within you, but Christ that lives within me. You've just got to take steps toward it. And, you know, then after a while it becomes easier. It's the first step that's always the hardest. Was it your child or was it that first step the hardest? They wobbled and they... But you were there to catch them. He's the same. 
Jesus is the same. The Father is the same. When you take those first little wobbly steps, he'll be there to catch you. Are you going to do something with it? Are you stirred up in your spirit that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you, that you are more than a conqueror, that you can walk through any circumstance, but you just only believe? Only believe. I think I better stop talking. So do you have a different spirit? Do you have a strong spirit? Are you full of the spirit? And in the power of the Holy Spirit, turn your wilderness experience into the greatest testimony that the world has ever seen. So when you're in that wilderness, it's time to hear from God. It's time to hear from God. It's time to hear from God. And if your ears are a bit rusty and you've forgotten what he said, it's time to go dig in and follow fully after him and he will give you a fresh word. He'll remind you of who you are, that you're bought with a price, that you're in the family of God, that we're this family that is just so close and that we can lift each other up when you fall down. Amen? Okay, let's just stand up. We've got to sing, but you're no longer a slave to fear. You're a child of God. You know, we have an amazing team here. If you want to get charged up, stirred up, built up, stand up. If you want to go, then come. We just want to impart to you. We want to charge you in the spirit, charge you with the call of God that's on your life. And if it's a bit dry and if it's a bit, you've forgotten what it is, we want to charge it again. And if you want to come out and just be charged again, refresh again the eyes that God has on you, the call of God that he has on you, then let's do it. You want to do it? Do you want to do it? Do you want to go?